This is the first video in our complex numbers uh, series of lessons. Complex numbers uh, is an actual area of mathematics that goes beyond the kind of number systems that we're already familiar with. And I've put on the, on the, the screen here just a little s story of where we've gone with our numbers up until now. And it starts way back uh, in the, the middle here uh, where we've got natural numbers or counting numbers. And from there we expand our ideas, and quite often in our in, in the journey of numbers, uh, particularly when we're learning about it, we get told at particular points where you can't do that. So, for instance, we we learn about addition and subtraction, but when it comes to two subtract five, uh, you may get told in in primary school, well, you can't do that, and that just means that we we're not really uh, expanding our knowledge of numbers sufficiently. We're just going to leave it there. The, uh, the rules that we know don't allow us to go there. And then we find later on, well, you can take 5 away from 2. And that takes us into the set of integers. Um, and, but we're also exploring uh, all that time fractions and decimals and the whole idea of rational numbers. So the big blue uh, set there is mostly the numbers that people get used to in uh, at secondary school level. And then we might look for some of them at the idea of irrational numbers and the idea of, well, these are not, they're the only ones that aren't in this whole set there. They're separate. The idea of irrational numbers, they've got their own kind of rules, but they all fit within the big green set of real numbers. And that, as far as most of mathematics, is where we rest our rules. Everything that we know about numbers works in the set of real numbers until we come to a calculation that we still are told uh, that we can't do. So we can pretty well do uh, most calculations uh, so far, and we've learnt that we can do most of the things. But if you look over here at this calculation here, and if we do the square root of negative 4, well, that's still a calculation that most of you would think, well, we can't do that. That's just there isn't a as the rule says it's got to be a positive number or zero. It can't be a negative. We cannot find the square root of a negative number. But that's not because we can't. It's just because we don't have rules. We haven't gone into the new set. And the orange set that I've drawn around this picture here uh, represents this expansion, this new territory outside the set of rule numbers, which is called the set of complex numbers. So that's going to allow us to find an answer to uh, the, the calculation square root of negative 4, but it requires a little bit of understanding first of all. So we're going to go into having a look at something that, again, uh, you maybe know already, and here we have the uh, solutions of a quadratic equation. A x squared plus b x plus c is equal to 0. We can find the solutions to that quadratic equation in one of two ways. We could um, factorise it and solve, or if, if it doesn't factorise, we could use the quadratic formula. All well and good. And we know that there's a solution as long as one condition is true, and that is that uh, we've got a little test, and that test is a discriminant, and the discriminant has to be greater or equal to zero. In other words, we can say that there are one or two real roots, and if the discriminant is less than zero, we might say, oh, there are no real roots, and we can't find them. So the question is, why? What's the? Why is it that the discriminant has to be uh, zero or greater. What is the what's the fact that it's negative? What's what is it about a negative discriminant that makes it unable to solve this equation? Well, if you remember that we're coming from the uh, idea of trying to solve this using the quadratic formula, and here it is, and the discriminant is simply the bit that goes here. Because in every time we try to solve this equation, if that number under the square root sign is 0, then it means there only is one value, negative b over 2a. 
if that number under the square root sign is positive, it means we've got two values, a value we're going to add to negative b and a value that we're going to subtract, which gives us our two solutions. But of course, we cannot, um, see that's going to, we cannot, put in here something like that. In other words, if the discriminant is negative 8, if the, this value here is negative 8, we call that the discriminant, we say, well, I, we just can't do it, so there's no solution, end of story. And that was your previous experience of solving quadratic equations. So, let's have a think about how we could move forward. We need a number that allows us to progress. So it was suggested or developed that we could actually introduce a number which helped to solve that particular problem. How about we say that the square root, so how about we say that we introduce some number i, could stand for imaginary, um, is the square root of i is negative 1. Okay, now the reason why it's written that way is that it implies, therefore, that i is the square root of negative 1, and that's this uh, the legendary thing that we can't do. The square root of negative 1 we're going to call i, or i squared equals negative 1. The reason they're called imaginary numbers is actually they were introduced when the concept was introduced. Uh, back in the, the 17th, 18th century, they were actually uh, laughed at and the idea of imaginary was supposed to be a derogatory term uh, by those who thought that it was a, a whole lot of nonsense. But the name stuck, and so we use the idea of i for imaginary numbers. So if we say that i squared is negative 1, it opens up, in actual fact, the ability to calculate all sorts of things. Let's have a look and see. So if we're saying that a square root of negative 16, for instance, could be expressed as 16 times negative 1, then it means that we can split these up and say that, in actual fact, we've got the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of negative 1. We happen to know the square root of negative 1 is i, and we know that the square root of 16 is 4. And in both cases, we would add the little condition that it could be positive or negative 4i. That's the answer. The square root of negative 50 takes a little bit more at working it only because 50 itself is not a perfect square. So we could think about it as 50 times negative 1. We could even expand that to say that it's 25 times 2 times negative 1. And two of those we can actually work out as values. Root 25 is 5. Root 2 is a third, which is not going to happen. And the square root of negative 1 is i. And again, with our positive and negative, the square root of negative 50 we can write as with the positive of a negative of 5 root 2i. And we can work the other way, and we can multiply using imaginary numbers by saying that 7i squared would be the same as 7 squared multiplied by i squared. And we can substitute for i squared, which we've defined as negative 1, to say that for the first time possibly ever in your life, you've squared a number, and it's given you a negative answer. These results here go against what you've been taught, which is that you can't find the square root of a negative number, and when you square something, the result is always positive. Okay, So I'm going to leave uh, that introduction there. Uh, I'm going to go on to using the quadratic equations to, to look at how we could actually get now the, the solution to a quadratic equation. Um, but just to keep this video uh, under 10 minutes, we'll leave the introduction, go and have a look at the next example of how to use complex numbers uh, or imaginary numbers in order to solve a quadratic equation. Okay, so far so good.